Okay. Good morning and welcome to the May 19, 2021 meeting of the Transit Commission. Uh, we've received regrets from Commissioner Wright Gilbert. She'll be unable to attend today. Could the Commission Coordinator please call the roll call for the remaining members? Commissioner Rockington. Here. Commissioner Caracato. Here. Commissioner Gower. Here. Commissioner Kavanaugh. Mister? <laughs> Here. Uh, Commissioner McKenney. Present. Uh, Commissioner uh, Olson. Present. Commissioner Suds. Here. Uh, Commissioner Tierney. Present. Commissioner Williams. Uh, Commissioner Wright Gilbert. Uh, Commissioner, uh, apologies, Vice Chair Clutzi. Good morning. Uh, Chair Hubley. Here. No quorum, Chair. Okay, thank you. The, um, so any uh, declarations of interest? See none. Confirmation of the minutes for the last meeting, the 21st of April uh, Transit Commission meeting. Are those minutes confirmed? Carried. Thank you. Carried. Uh, so uh, we have a short agenda today. There's uh, uh, just two items. Uh, the Confederation Line uh, update, which will hold. Uh, there's a presentation with some slides. Item number two is the general accounts uh, transit write-offs. Is there, uh, there's no presentation, there's no delegation. Does anybody want to hold that item or are we prepared to uh, receive it or carry it? Carried. Carried. Okay, thank you. Carried. I want to congratulate staff uh, for such an amazing job on the write-offs that there's only a little over $300 worth of write-offs on that large a, uh, an account is uh, quite well done. So thank you for that. Okay, so uh, no other items. So we go back to uh, item number one, the the update. And I uh, believe uh, Mr. Manconi, Troy Charter and Pat Scrimger will uh, lead the presentation. So whenever you're ready, uh, Mr. Manconi. Yes, good morning, uh, Chair, members of the Commission. Now I'm gonna turn it right over to Troy right now. All right, thank you, John. You can bring up the slide deck, that'd be great. Okay, thank you. And we'll right into the, the overview and then to the first slide. So like previous presentations, performance of line one, followed by uh, some information on the rectification plan, train wheels, transit recovery update, and COVID-19 will be updates from uh, my colleague, Pat. So Eric, if you could just go to the, the next slide. So it's the overview and then the next slide after that would be great. So, um, you know, the for the month of, uh, for the month of April, we ended off at 99%. And uh, so far for the month of May, we're, uh, we're at 99% as well. So that would make uh, nine, nine months in a row where we've been at 97% or higher. And of that of which uh, seven, seven of those months we're at 98% or higher. So very, very good stable performance um, for the last nine months. Next slide, please. So the slide shows the, um, as I said, as previous um, presentations, shows any sort of fluctuation day to day the, the dotted line across the top is 97 percent so again we're, we're seeing both the the good performance on a monthly basis but we're seeing we're seeing very very good consistency on a day-to-day -day basis most days you know 97 98 99 percent are right around that level and we're not seeing those those drops that we saw uh, in previous years next slide please and then the last one again it's the um, combination of the two slides together um again it's just different way of showing the same thing, but 99% for April and May, um, very little uh, variability. And most of the variability we see is that 97 to 99 range. You know, we're seeing fewer and fewer days that uh, where we drop below that 97, 95%. So um, it's all pointing towards, you know, the, we're trending in the right direction, we're, we're, we're stable. And we, you know, our customers are seeing good service both daily and on a, on a when you aggregate it on a monthly basis. I'll move forward next. The next slide is the rectification plan and other works. So 
as previously communicated, five of those uh, five of those seven items are done: bridge feeders, catenary system, traction power, passenger doors, and vehicle HVAC. The uh, coupler inspections—they're just finishing up the last couple of vehicles uh, this week and into early next week, and then that, all that work will be done. Recall that was um, post, um, or well, that was one of the more newer issues that uh, came up that was potentially causing some of this in-service disruptions. We haven't had any of those disruptions for months now, uh, but they were doing that complete uh, fleet check and, and doing any sort of associated works with us with the couplers. So that work is almost done there on the last uh, last couple of vehicles now. Uh, the seasonal track work that still is progressing well. We're still working to finalize those plans. Um, RTM have secured the specialized equipment. I'll show you on the next slides and pictures. Um, we, we anticipate that this work is well. This work will be taking place in June, and we're just finalizing the actual start date and time and that sort of stuff. Um, most likely there will be some um, temporary uh, service closures for that um, to allow that work to go on and it will be fairly extensive. Um, the auxiliary power units, the CVS units, just wrapping that up, the remaining few vehicles on that, and then the, the fine tuning of vehicle braking systems is going to continue. Um, and then, you know, as, as previously stated, um, you know, although the work is considered complete, it is going through that independent assessment to validate that the the fixes are you know, long-term, they'll, they'll be able to sustain and they actually do correct the problem. So that, uh, that assessment's ongoing as well. Next slide, please. So just a few pictures, um, you know, the, the, the pictures there, you see that at nighttime where the, the equipment's actually grinding, that, that is uh, work that was done last year on, on the rail line. Um, and just show it here to show the, the extent, um, you know, it, it's, it's fairly significant work. Uh, they grind, they grind the rail, they repolish it. And make it smooth. And the actual equipment that we're getting this year um, is what you see in the other two pictures. Um, that big, uh, long piece of equipment there. Um, that is rail grinding machinery. This is currently working at a property in Vancouver. This was just about a month ago. Um, I believe um, the equipment. Well, this this equipment does travel all over North America, and it gets booked months and months, if not years, in advance. So it was in Vancouver. Then it was coming to a property in Ontario. And then it, you know it'll be coming to us right after that, so it's planned for June. But um, you know that that's the equipment that we're going to see on the line that's going to be doing our rail grinding from end to end. And um, you know we, we we do anticipate that once that work's done, that uh, we'll see some improvements in terms of noise and in vibration that uh, is impacting the the customer experience. Uh, next slide, please. And then with regards to train wheels, the the inspection and replacement work continues, and it is working on both sites. Um, you know, I, I can't stress this enough, but until the work is complete, the daily inspections of the fleet will continue, um, and it is continuing. And then, as always, uh, the, in, the TSB is, do, is continuing with their independent uh, investigation, and we continue to engage with them as well as any other parties that we need to, whether it be the chief safety officer, the regulatory monitor compliance officer, any sort of experts that we need. We, we have people on call and available to support us in that regard. And... At this point, I'll turn it over to my colleague, Pat. Thank you. Thanks, Troy. The next slide, please, Eric. So in April, uh, ridership was uh, down a little bit because of the, the lockdown and the stay-at-home order. Uh, so ridership in the month of April was at 19% of its usual levels. Uh, we'll continue to monitor ridership and um, make any service adjustments as necessary if there are uh, particular travel needs to any part of the city. Next slide, please. Uh, since the beginning of the pandemic, we're now at 124 OC Transpo staff who have tested positive for COVID-19. 106 of those people have recovered and are back at work. Uh, 18 are self-isolating and recovering. And another note that as of last week, all frontline transit workers uh, are eligible to book and receive a vaccine. Uh, the next slide, please. I believe that's the end. We'll be happy to answer any questions you have. Thank you uh, very much to, uh, for the presentation, folks. Is there any questions? No. Uh, Vice Chair Kluge? Sure. Uh, thank you, uh, Chair. Uh, thank you for the presentation and, and for, for those updates. Just as a matter of interest, um, when do we expect the rails to have to be replaced? 
they, they get uh, maintained and, and there's a grinding process on, on a periodic basis. When does that have to be replaced? It's uh, a good question, uh, Mr. Chair. Uh, it, it can vary significantly. Uh, it depends on you know how much grinding and how much activity is on that. So things like um, you know curves, you'd see um, you know more they'd be replaced more frequently than you know straight or tangent track. But you're you're talking several years before you'd be even looking at replacing track. But um, curves would be replaced first, and then you'd be looking at tangent track. And it all depends on the amount the amount of work that has to go onto it. But it, it, it's many many years before you're looking at uh, replacing. But um, on an annual basis, though, you may be looking. You, you know what they do to maintain the track is they may cut out little sections of track to deal with the expansion, or they may add in sections of track to deal with the contraction in the winter. So there's always those adjustments that are going on on the track. So they're always working on it, um, whether it's whether it's grinding or adding little segments or taking little pieces out. Um, but then, you know, more extensive work that is it's years down the road, you know, you'd be looking at maybe replacing chunks at a time. Okay, so there is no, <clears throat> generally railways do not replace all the tracks or five consecutive kilometers of track. Uh, it, it would be in sections and curves being one of the uh, areas of the track that, that uh, might might need to be replaced more yeah, frequently. And, you know, they, 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 they go out, they do, you know, daily and weekly measurements on the track. And, you know, when they meet certain tolerances, you know, that's when it, it would advise them that they need to replace that track. So they, they do have some, there, there are timelines associated when, when, when you look at replacing it, but then they also have to be going out and taking regular uh, set, um, measurements. And, you know, they have, they have tolerances. And once it reaches a certain tolerance, then they have to look at replacing it. But it's a combination of things. There's a time factor, but then as well, based on what they, they see when they're doing their, their daily inspections. Thank you. And just the last question, that maintenance, that uh, replacement, uh, the booking of that, uh, that machine, all of that is RTG's responsibility and part of their 30-year uh, contract? That is correct. Thank you. Thank you, Chair. Okay, thank you, Vice Chair Kluche. Next up is uh, Commissioner Brockington, please. Thanks, Chair, and <clears throat> good morning to you and, and colleagues. Uh, two quick questions for staff. With the low uh, volumes of ridership, particularly on LRT, is there any preventative or testing work planned for this summer where you can take advantage of the low ridership numbers to do work, maybe advanced work, similar to what we did last year? Uh, yes, uh, Mr. Chair, uh, we've, uh, you know, we continue to offer and make it, make it, make it known that uh, you know, we want to continue to leverage this period of low ridership to do things. There's, there, there is lots of work that is going on that we are, have been able to leverage, um, leverage this time. There's some work that's going on with respect to the vehicles, some of the rectification work um, in terms of the, the fine tuning of the brakes. We've been able to do some things at nights and overnight, and overnights and, and in the evenings. Um, you know, obviously track work is, is a big piece to this. Um, but, you know, we've continually talked to them about, you know, if there's opportunities to, you know, put another train in to, uh, to troubleshoot something, you know, we'll, we'll do that. Um, and we continue to offer, you know, if there's opportunities to, you know, do temporary closures or something like that, that would allow them to expedite some work. Now's the time to do it. And, uh, you know, it, it's becoming more and more evident that we, we need to do it now because, you know, with, with the vaccine rollout, um, you know, uh, you know, hoping that ridership will return once, you know, we see, start to see more and more people vaccinated. But yeah, no, that, that is a, a constant conversation with them and we are leveraging it for several things. Great, and my other question uh, to Mr. Scrimger through you, Chair, is just regarding your ability to amend the bus type on routes where we may be seeing above average ridership. How quick are you able to ascertain the need to switch out a regular bus to an articulated or double decker should volumes be higher. What, what are the triggers for you to make that decision? Uh, so the, the triggers are that there's observations being made all the time, of course, by the operators on the buses, by the customers on those trips. Uh, when customers uh, report any overcrowding, we uh, speak with the operators and have supervisors uh, go and investigate usually the next day and um, see whether it's a continuing trend or if it was a, uh, an issue just on that one day. 
um, when we need to add a trip, when we need to uh, change out a bus type, we can usually do it within two days. Okay, thanks very much. Thanks, Chair. Thank you very much, uh, Councillor Brockington. And next up is uh, Councillor Kavanaugh, please. Thank you. Uh, just a quick question. Um, in regards to the special machinery, um, Troy, that uh, for grinding the uh, rails, uh, why is it they're just one set like it that, that goes across North America? It seems a bit odd when, when rail is growing. Yeah, there, there, there are multiple companies that, that do the work, but uh, you know, the, the, the equipment does tend to get booked, um, you know, months and months in advance. And, you know, um, that's why, you know, railroad companies, they need to be uh, proactive and thinking ahead of what, you know, what we're going to be doing next season. So um, there are, there are, you know, it's, it's specialized equipment. It's very expensive. And, you know, that's, that's how the industry is operated is that the, these large pieces of uh, infrastructure, capital investments, um, typically you have firms that specialize in that work and, they, they specialize as well in the, um, you know, in, in track itself. So, you know, you, you get not only just the, the, the equipment, you get all the expertise that goes with, you know, um, setting up the track and getting the right profile. So the wheels um, interact with that, that track is, you know, as well, as well as it can be. So, um, you know, that, that's how the industry generally operates is these, you know, there you have these other big pieces of equipment like ballast regulators and all that sort of thing that, that um, they do tour around and they, you know, they, that's how companies are, I guess, are able to manage part of their, their bottom line and their, and their, um, their finances that rather than having to purchase this equipment that they only need to use once a year or once every couple of years, they rent it and they have that company come in with their own crew and uh, maintain the rail according to your specifications. Do you know how much they cost? I, I, I'm not, I'm not saying we're going to buy one. I'm just, I'm just curious. No, I, I don't know how much, I don't know how much, I mean, I'm sure that's something that we could try to find out, but uh, I, I don't know that off the top of my head. Okay, that's all. Thank you. Okay, thank you, Councillor Kavanaugh. Okay, so seeing no other questions, that concludes the update on the Confederation line of bus service. Uh, there is, let's see here where we're going to next. Okay, next is in camera items. Uh, we do not have any for today. Are there any notices of motion? Okay, uh, any inquiries? Let's see, none. Uh, is there any other business? See none. The, okay, if we could just have a motion to adjourn. Motion to adjourn. Yep. Carry, okay, thank you. Uh, our next meeting will be Wednesday, June 16th, 2021. And the media availability will start in uh, 15 minutes, so 10.05. Okay, thank you everybody for your day. Thanks, Have Alan. a great day. Thanks, Chairman. Have a good day.